Hi, it's a couple of days after uh, the bulk of this video and whether I put this before or after I don't know yet so it's either a prologue or an epilogue uh, but I just want to add a couple of things uh, to what I've uh, been saying. Um, for fellow wind warriors uh, everything I said will come as uh, no news no surprises and it will all make perfect sense but for the rest of you uh, who I do hope watch this people who've never heard of this sort of topic before um, you might be thinking I'm totally bonkers and banging on about stinging nettles is a bit weird and I you know I kind of asked myself did I really make clear the point of the analogy as clearly as, as I wanted to so what I will just add to the bulk of that uh, most of it you know I think it's all right <laughs> I don't think I came across too badly, hopefully fairly reasonably. Uh, but what I'd just add to the bulk of the video uh, is that it is essentially about words. That's what it's about. Uh, it's about words and it's about something called NLP or Neuro Linguistic Programming, uh, which is basically a technique used in advertising, uh, some might say brainwashing. And basically Neuro Linguistic Programming means triggering our responses by the linguistics, by the words we use. And really, you look at everything to do with wind power and you see there's NLP involved, there's playing with words. And you can start with the expression wind farm, a farm. You know, you think of sort of, oh, it's nice and rural, oh, the chickens, oh, you know, cows, sheep. Uh, and that's why it's called a wind farm, farming the wind, uh, as opposed to a wind factory. Now imagine if we called them wind factories or wind power stations or wind electricity generators. Uh, immediately you'd get a different kind of neurological reaction if you like uh, that's why it's neuro-linguistic programming so everything to do with wind power needs deconstruction uh, deconstruction on a kind of linguistic level and that's why the, anal the analogy with stinging nettles is so apt because the name stinging nettles includes the negative uh, fact about them as part of the description and in a way the kind of defining characteristic of these these are stinging nettles and my point is that you know we talk about wind farms with that kind of hidden positive rural bucolic idyll kind of uh, implication w what we need to do is we talk we need to start talking about things like you know wind blades because blades have, have that kind of negative connotation of violence and aggression so we need to look at the language of wind power and we need to use similar language to stinging nettles to describe the visceral kind of immediate negative reaction we get to uh, seeing or experiencing wind turbines and it feels like being stunk. Hi, my name is Adam, not that it's important, and this is actually a retake of the original take uh, and through a bit of fancy editing I'm able to splice this together and make one long video. Not too long I hope, and I hope to keep your attention all the way through. I'm redoing this because I thought I uh, rambled a bit and uh, I critically think my own work. Uh, I look back at it and I think, am I getting across the points I want to get across as succinctly and as unambiguously as possible? Uh, so, I wasn't quite as pithy enough. Uh, I'm going to try again. Without further ado, what have I got against wind power? Well, as I said in the what was going to be the epilogue and is now the prologue, uh, it is about words. Uh, and uh, I'd like to really use that as a starting point. And I talked about wind farms uh, and the NLP, the Neuro Linguistic Programming, of the wind companies to make everything sound hunky dory. Uh, there's a lot. It's clean green energy is when you see a lot. Sounds good, doesn't it? Clean and green. We all want that. Let's break it down though. Is it as clean and green as it says it is? That's the point. Now it's having a go at the ideas of cleanliness and greenness. Far from it. What we're having a go at is people who claim to be and aren't, aren't what they say they are. Uh, it's false advertising, really. Uh, it's selling shoddy goods like Del Boy, Fools and Horses, The Arthur Daily, Minder, Ask Your Grandparents. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, anyway, uh, clean green energy. Well, the idea that it's clean is uh, based on the fact that there's no CO2 emissions. Fact is, though, Wind relies on backup 100% of the time. We never know if it's going to be windy or not. Uh, and you can't just sort of turn the grid on and off. Oh, I've kept passing a wind turbine. I am on the M62 near Warrington. Uh, and just a quick disclaimer, 
I do not touch my camera when I'm driving. I do not look at it. I stop the car, I hit start. I give it a few seconds, which is kind of dead time. I get driving again, then I start talking. Then when I'm done, I leave it rolling. I find someone to pull over, I hit stop. Uh, I just have to say that because someone actually referred to me talking in the car in one of my videos. This in fact invalidates my arguments. Uh, and that's kind of typical of what we're up against. Uh, the name calling and stuff, and, and the kind of spurious non-arguments. Uh, but anyway, I digress. So yeah, is it as clean and green as it says it is? It's certainly not green, I mean, that's for sure. And that's something I'm trying to take footage of. I'm trying to show you clean, or oh, green hills, clean green hills that have been sort of fouled up, turned dirty and turned into building sites. Grey and white replaced green. So no, uh, the wind turbine I'm looking at right now, which you can't see, but it's far from green. In fact, it's a horrible white grey colour. Uh, and it totally kind of dominates what would have been a green landscape. Uh, it covers up green. Uh, I don't think it's clean either. Now, let me give you another stat to ponder, and you can check this one out. Uh, let's round up to the nearest full number. Um, I see something just dangled in front of a camera, but I can't move it because it would be taking my hand off the steering wheel. Oh well. Uh, <laughs> guess how much? Globally, how much percentage of the world's power was produced by wind last year? To the nearest percentage figure. That's right, it was 0%. It might have been something like 0.3% uh, percent of the world's power was produced by wind, but not even 1%. So often you'll find that wind gets lumped in with, quote, renewables, renewables figures all the power was renewable and if you look a bit deeper you'll find that actually biomass is probably the biggest contributor from the renewables and let's bear in mind that biomass is actually chopped down trees deforestation wood pellets shipped over from the north american forests over to places like tracks where they get uh, burnt so it's burning wood all right no co2 emissions but it's still burning wood and it's hardly clean and it's hardly green so often, when you look at clean green energy, look very carefully, and you'll find it's playing with words, and it really refers to all renewables put together, of which wind is, is the absolute kind of run of the litter, really. It's like the nickelback of renewable energy, you know? It really is. It's, uh, it's just useless. It's useless. Now, the main point about the words as well is we've got to start from the standpoint that wind is ugly. And I was thinking about this, a lot of people say, oh, how can you, you know, like it's global warming, it's climate change, it's good for the planet, who cares what they look like, who cares about a bit of an eyesore? Why are they an eyesore? What makes them an eyesore? Are we agreed that they're an eyesore? And are we agreed that that has a destructive impact on human beings? If, if the look of something isn't important, does it matter what the food you're going to eat looks like? Does it matter what the person you're going to kiss looks like? Does it matter about the house you buy? what it looks like. Of course it matters. And the look of stuff on the outside, unless you're very superficial, is often a reflection of kind of ugliness or beauty on the inside, certainly for me. So when I see an ugly wind turbine, it's not like something with a beautiful heart that's just got an ugly skin. It's actually like that movie, Shallow How, is the interior workings are ugly, it's what they represent is ugly. Uh, there's a quote from the Bible, if you're that way inclined, by their fruits, so you shall recognise them. Uh, don't ask me to say where I came from, but it's a good quote and it makes sense. By their fruits, you shall recognise them. The fact is, the fruit of wind farm operators is brutal, warped, bent blades imposed on people against their will, erections inserted into hills and mother earth against her will without her consent. Uh, washed in white, like a whitewash, totally inappropriate paint, it's got no environmental benefit whatsoever. Um, we have to use negative vocabulary as the first choice of terminology about wind power. I like the word blades. I think that sums it up. What we're doing with wind power is we're giving corporate control over our green, unspoiled places to people who want to erect brutal, warped blades and we have to look at the terminology we use very very carefully and very very accurately and we can't keep using these silly words like clean and green 
without breaking them down a bit. They're not green. They take somewhere that was green and they make it less green. Uh, they really do. Look at Scout Wall. Well, it was more kind of brown uh, for peat wool. Did you know that peat absorbs CO2? So every concrete foundation, every HGV access track across the moorland that removes peat is removing one of nature's most potent sponges to absorb CO2. Um, ask David Bellamy, he knows more about this than me. Ask him what he thinks of wind power, wind power and wind blades. Even the word turbine sounds horrible, aren't they? What, think of a turbine, it's an engine. Um, it's industrial. You know, let's get real, these are power stations and they're useless ones. They're really poor. They don't work when it's too windy. They don't work when it's not windy enough. On any given day, you look at a load of them and you'll see there's no correlation between wind speed and how fast they're going. Um, they, they really are appalling. And, and the, you know, we, we, there's no pussyfooting around the fact they need to come down and heads must roll. And if you insist on having one, you'll be forced to take it down and you will go to prison for it. Um, this is going to happen. If you've heard of an expression, the Orbiton window, this relates to bitter political discourse. Uh, and there are six stages. Now, let's see if I can remember them. Unacceptable, radical, uh, what was it? Sensible, popular, policy. Something like that. It's a shift in a discourse. My dears, you know, look at look at things like the trans agenda. Agenda, I said agenda, but the transgender agenda. And the Overton window on that. How that shifted over the last 10, 20 years. Um, that's what we need to do with wind power. We just need to shift the Orbiton window so that all progressive people, all green people, uh, are actually getting back into concern about corporations screwing up the planet. Uh, and I'm doing my bit, and so should you. Okay, uh, I hope that's uh, entertaining and informative. Do your own research, we can talk about everything. Feel free to reach out and contact me if you want to debate. Uh, always happy to get involved in debate. Silly name calling doesn't really hurt help uh, you know all right, I do a bit myself I call them eco vandals uh, but it's a name with a kind of analytical rational background behind it uh, I looked up the word vandal in the dictionary I, I abide, abided by the definition which says people who uh, destruct things uh, and I went through the planning uh, process and realized that these people did give approval for destruction of the environment knowingly or willingly uh, and therefore vandals, it is a name, but it's not a silly name, it's on top of it. And uh, if they can prove they're not vandals, I will remove that name. Okay, thank you very much indeed for watching.